Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is the 28th of January. It is Saturday morning. We are looking over here at Flare Network slash Tether. Tradingview.com is the charting service. Ticker symbol is FLRUSDT. That would be the Flare slash Tether USDT pair. FLRUSDT. We are on the KuCoin data here i actually like this chart over the other chart i had on the screen which was a bit true not really a fan of this chart like the kucoin data better so we actually had a, a decent close yesterday for flare looks like we closed up eight percent um, we were reversing quite hard actually yesterday. We were actually down in, let me get the correct tool on my chart here. We were actually down in this range here, down in the three, five or so level. And then we, this morning I checked the chart and we are up where last night we were up in the three, eight. And then this morning we are looking, it looks like we're trying to break out. So let's take a step back real quick, guys. Over in this time frame, the 20th, 19th, 18th of January, even into the 22nd, we were finding support at a level that I shared. Go back and watch those older flare videos. They're not too old, but they are going back a couple days. We had a support level roughly at the 396, which is this white horizontal line right here on the chart. And then we had a, which we basically tried to break out on the 21st and the 22nd failed on the 23rd. And then we got the big fail on the 24th. So it was support. There was support over here on the 11th and then the 18, 19, 20, 21st, all support. Then support got flipped and we broke lower and we were talking about, well, thing is we don't know how low this thing will go. I would, I also mentioned, I would be surprised to see if we undercut the low over here on the 10th, which was three cents on the money. So far we have a bottom in place, which took place on the 25th and we have marched higher ever since. All right, so back to today. We are finding resistance at which was old support. So if we take a look over here, I said I like this level for support, which is that 3.9 level. Support was broken. We put our bottom in place so far, and we are rallying back up. So far, we're finding resistance on today's candle. Like I said, today is the 28th of January. We're finding resistance at that three line, three nine, that white line I have on my chart. So we want to see a break above that three nine, which we have done today. We have broken above that, but we want to see a close above that. So we want to see, let's just say it's today. We want to see today's candle get above our three nine level, which is right here on the chart, get above and close up here somewhere. That would be very bullish. We could get a back test. So let's say we rally up. We close up in this range. So we have a, we officially are back above the 3.9 resistance. We could get a back test as support and then see that rally. That is one scenario that could take place. Let me just clean up the chart here, guys. Guys, welcome to the channel. Appreciate all of the subscribers. So we have, that is what we're looking for basically today and the days ahead or so. Could happen today, but so far it got pushed back down. If I go to the three minute time frame, let me fix this chart here. So here you go, guys. You can see we had a rally above our 3.9 level. Lower high. And then the break below back test resistance and then the big tumble and now we are up again you can see right here 
resistance. And so far we have a lower high right here. This is the three minute time frame, guys. If you have not watched, I believe it's the last XRP video. I talk about the three minute time frame and it being powerful on accumulating or taking your profits on positions that you're actively trading. And the reason is, is because we'll use this as, as an example real quick. Let's say that we want to buy when the price gets back above our three nine support. Well, zoomed into a smaller time frame, like the three minute time frame, we know right away when it's breaking above that time frame or that price level. Whereas the daily chart, it's a little bit more, it's tough to tough to see when it really breaks or finds support at certain levels. So anyways, you can see that we are still below that 3.9 area that we want to turn into support that is currently resistance. Back to the daily, let's zoom in here. We have a couple more things to share on the chart. I think you guys will appreciate. So that's today. Today, I would personally keep my eye on the 3.9 level, which is on my chart right here, the white line, guys. I want to see a break. I want to see a close above that. That would give me some more confidence in this thing that is we're getting ready for a bullish run here. Taking a step back to yesterday, we are back above this white 45 degree area that was acting as resistance all along here. Then it turned into support for a day or two, and then it really broke. We are actually back above that, so that is good. So one thing you could do, not financial advice, of course. Got to study the charts and decide if this is right for you is... I have my white resistance line right here, you know, 45 degree roughly, creating this wedge. When we broke a back above that, so it turned into, it failed breakout on the 24th. We were back below it, so it's still resistance. Put in our bottom on the 25th. Big, big reversal on the 26th, all the way back up to our 3.9, and then closed Way at the low end of the range, below our 45 degree angle line. So still resistance, failed breakout. What happened on the 27th? We rallied strong back above our 45 degree line right here and had a strong close. So the way you could be looking at this 45 degree line is you could be accumulating part of a position above that. And the reason why I say part of a position is because... I'm still looking for that 3.9 level to be broken and closed above. So you could use that 27th area back above this 45 degree line here as a partial entry. Let's say you take half your position there when you've got a close or a break above it. You have half your position there. So that's let's call that. Let's say you entered that position roughly at 3.6. We had a nice strong close at, what was our close here, at 3.8. And then the second part of your position, you're going to enter at that 3.9 level. So you're roughly in at 3.6, three, and then your other position gets added another, call it 9% higher at that 3.9 level. Now you could have added on... In the same, the same method as you could have added on the 26th when we broke that 3.6 level, but you probably should have been stopped out or closed your position because we closed below it. So that was a failed breakout. And if I clean up my chart real quick here, you could see for some reason this is not working. There we go. This big candle wick right here and a close below our white 45 degree line is a failed breakout. So you could have still bought it at 3.6. We rallied up strong. You're up 6, 7, 8%. Weak, weak close. Personally, if I was looking to trade this actively, I would be out of that position because that candle is not a good look. It actually looked like I wanted to do further downside. Obviously, it didn't. So same thing. Re-enter at 3.6 on the next day. Strong close, hold that position, look to enter 
you know, another part of your position when we get a break above 3.9, which we did. So you could still be holding that position. And if we close below it, you can decide to close that or you could have a stop in place. Um, just an example of how you could average into a, or dollar cost average into a position, trying to lower that risk. Instead of going all in at one price, kind of stair step in or stair step out. Just an example, guys. So real quick here, let's take a look. So we have this wedge here. And these usually break to the upside in a big, big way. Guys, I have two upper targets. So once we get above 3.9, that white line we've been talking about, I have a target, a target one up here at 5.30, let's see here, 5.33, which is right here, that's that 5 cent range, 5.33, Target one, and then I have a target two up there at six zero seven. That's six cents. So that takes us into our target one at five three three. Takes us into a new high here on KuCoin for Flare Network, and then our, our second target up there at six obviously takes us um, into a new high as well at the six zero seven level. So those are two areas I will be watching. And in my opinion, those would be two areas to potentially lock in some profits. Doesn't mean it's not going to go higher, but that is what I would personally be looking for. So target one would be a 35% move from where we're trading at today. And target two would be a 53% move from where we're trading at today. I was personally accumulating flair on these days over here, the... 18th, 19th, and 20th, 21st, right at that level, basically right where we're trading at right now. The reason why I was picking up shares there is because we were finding support at 39. Then we got broke to the downside, found support, rallied back up, so we're right back at that, what I think to be a important level. But still want to get a close above that, and then I think we could be, we could see a nice rally, perhaps into some new highs here hitting that target number one, and even maybe hitting that target number two. So that's what I'm looking for, guys. That's my thoughts on Flare Network. Obviously, the rest of the market continuing higher should help a lot. If that doesn't take place, then we could have to wait a bit longer for some consolidations to take place and then the rallies to continue. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up. Join us on the channel. Hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified, turn on the bell notifications. Let me know your thoughts on Flare. Looking for that close above 3.9 today. And then we could be in for a nice rally. All right, guys. Take care.